Greetings and welcome to Cosmic Crit. This is Rebecca here to introduce episode 62. We hope everyone had a great holiday here in the States and that you didn't fill up too much on food and were able to save some room for dessert. We are really excited to get back to playing Starfinder and of course sharing our adventure with you. This week is the last week to get your submissions in for our November fan submission challenge, and that's to make up a holiday in the Starfinder universe. Our top winner will be featured in an episode of Cosmic Crit, and who knows, maybe it will take off and the holiday will become very popular. You might even see future heroes on the show celebrating your submission, and you can know that you had a hand in helping to shape our story. If you want to submit, check the link in the description of this episode or find us online on our site, CosmicCrit.com. We love to hear from you and chat with the Crittermander community. So you can also join our fan Discord server and talk to us about new episodes, play Starfinder Society, or just talk Starfinder in general. This week's episode is a long one, so we hope you buckle up and enjoy this part of Book 6. This episode is called... Salute, Salute your, your corpse. corpse. Last time on Cosmic Crit. Alindra contemplated her recent confrontation and resolution with her long lost sister Faloria and found inner balance and greater power within. Raimi gets his affairs in order by sending a long overdue message to his parents. After learning the fate of Jero Braskin, Andis receives a piece of advice secondhand from their prior self. You see, life isn't long enough to waste on revenge. Don't get even. Get justice. A dross apologizes to the crew for, well, mm. being a dross. In another life, Knack would be looking to take control of this super weapon for the sake of his family. But today... No. Also, the corpse fleet's here. Episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. From Phobos to Deimos, it's time to lock and load and kick some fragging butt, Space Marines, in this week's episode of Cosmic Doom. My name is Patrick, and I'm your BFGM9000, a.k.a. your big friendly gun master i'm here to kick undead fleam sticks out airlocks and destroy some demon posteriors joining me on a stem pack field search for red yellow and blue key cards are my five friends and your players to my left a shotgun wielding possessed marine mowed down in a hail of gunfire it's drew playing zombie man knack Felsbar. rip and tear rip and tear <laughs> to his left this cyber demon can fire rockets until the cows come home it's jabert playing andis 147 Greetings, Patrick. Greetings. Greetings. Across the digital table, a fireball flinging imp straight out of the depths of H-E double hockey sticks. It's Miles playing Raimi Quindar. Good evening. To his left, the Doom Gal wielding a chainsaw made of solarian energy. It's Rebecca playing Alindra Ballas. Hello. And finally to my right, a big old dumb pink gorilla charging at you full speed. It's Tyler playing Trust for one. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that's what I was reading it. It's like, oh no. What's he gonna do? <laughs> What's he gonna do for this? <laughs> oh, do yeah, my do, best do, gorilla. Do like no lines. <laughs> oh. oh boy. How are you guys doing, everyone? I'm sorry, what was that? What was it a reference to? Doom. 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 I said like the video game? Exactly yeah. like the video okay, game. Cool. Not, not like cool. the concept. That is Im impending. Our, <laughs> okay, cool. I didn't know there were pink gorillas in that, so I thought it was Doom. And then there, there pink. are. Okay. Not, there are. They're not gorillas so much. They but pretty much look like. They do look gorillas. a little bit like shaved gorillas. They have horns though, and different faces. Uh, that new Doom that released a couple years ago is pretty good, by the way. People should play that if you are of the age to do so. This well, is we are playing Starfinder, <laughs> so. This has been Drew's Game Review, the <laughs> first and only episode you'll ever hear on the podcast. Uh, we are back for another episode to really dig into the meat of book six of Dead Sons. What, what happened last time at the end of episode 61, or I guess at the end of episode 62, since we kind of went back in time a little bit? There were a lot of ships in the sky. Yeah, yes. corpse fleet ships. Correct. 
<laughs> and there was one less because at the end of the last episode, I there was one on the ground. <laughs> there's one that made it to the jungle of controller gate number one landing. The sepulcher about. is that a type of ship? Yes, sepulcher transport vessel. And yeah, you guys are all shocked at the scene that you are witnessing on the computer monitors in the facility. This massive space battle has broken out. One of them is landing. What are you all doing? You mean after we see this? Yep. Yep. We're going. We're making oh. uh, I'm, I'm reality's make, happening now. We're making awkward eye contact with everybody. Are are we going out there? Are we going to do yeah, this? I, yeah, I, I think I think uh, Andis uh, uh, has already retreated into their mind to try to put together like a, a plan to uh, uh, jump jump these guys. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ambush. Ambush. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> so Alindra would pipe up to say, "We already almost lost our ship once. I say we vacate and meet them before they get here." Yes, I like that. Take it right to them. We need to figure out, you know, what these things are doing on this planet, and maybe if we can take their ship, that will be a bonus as well. So as, as you guys are locking and loading, getting ready to kick some fragging butt, Bumfuzzle perks up and says, well, Six is still back at the ship. Suppose they saw the the, the ship from a, overhead. You're right. Oh, yes. You should probably get back over there. Right. We should go back to our ship and protect it so that they don't take it again. <laughs> That's we're gonna need <laughs> we're gonna need that ship. Yeah. Are we we're even very sure? sensitive to leaving our ship alone now? <laughs> are we yes. are we even sure the ship can get off the ground? We've uh, been repairing it over the last few days. Yeah, yeah. Took some of those good good UPBs and just slapped them on the side and rubbed them in real good. Just cut computers out of the facility and like glued them <laughs> onto the ship. I think that's how it works in the future. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, we, so we've upgraded our armor, gang. Oh. So uh, hold on, can I get a, a lay of the land? Like, where are these landmarks? Is is the ship between us and the sepulcher, or like the? the Did your I mean? crashed maybe a, a little bit west of the? the scorched path that you walked from where you initially landed on the planet and the facility. So it's about halfway between those. So if they were indeed going straight for the ship, you would probably just meet up with them as they got there. If you left. Okay. I think we should do that. Agreed. Let's do it. Sure. Let's go. Um, Why don't you give me a survival check getting through the jungle? A a trip you might've made a few times. Who's got the best survival? Alrighty, we've got a couple of rolls here. Some good ones. Nick, maybe you've traveled this path the most in the last few days between the ship and the facility. You're able to get back there pretty quickly, but when you do, you can already tell that there is some kind of commotion going on at the ship. Why don't you all give me a perception check? Dang, Nick. Jeez, Nick. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> A natural 20. <laughs> the next is the, the invisible people hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 40 overall. Pretty good, I guess. You all have some good perception. I see a 23, a 21, a 40, and a 29, and we won't talk about I it. I see a 7. <laughs> <laughs> I said we weren't going to talk about it, Javert. A not-so-lucky 7. <laughs> so it is a good patch of jungle that I'm going to reveal here. Drew, and as you are walking up to the drift rider, you see crouched like on top of the ship, scanning the surrounding jungle, a couple of what look like undead soldiers and <gasps> heavy armor. You also see a couple in the brush underneath the ship. Looks like they're they're hiding out behind this what looks like a, a dead log. Are they hiding on the wrong side at least? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're taking cover it looks like and then as you all are, are walking up Nack can, can point that out you're over 100 feet away still from the ship and you do seem like you have a, a good amount of cover as well uh, what would you guys like to do uh, stealth with a jetpack is there oh, oh, nah, nah. I assume you're telling everybody this yes nah, I, I had Remy and Andis whip up a new toy can I use it I want to say yes but end of a can you tell us oh, about it? Yes. You see this blue button on my armor now. I push it, and I go invisible. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Yes. That's pretty good. I think I push the button, and then I sneak up behind whoever you want me to sneak up behind. And then I will attack one, and then at my signal, you can the rest of you can rush in. 
Well, my signal will be hitting someone really hard. There's a lot of brush over here, and I'm pretty small. I bet I could bet I could sneak up over there too. I'm, I'm not too worried about sneaking up on the guys on the ground. It's the guys on top of the ship that I'm worried about, because they're gonna have a a much better view of everything going on. Just leave those to me. And Andis sneaks uh, sneaks away through the bushes. Around to the left. <laughs> Sneaks away. <laughs> Clever girl. Okay, so Knack and I will go, we'll try to sneak through on the right. And uh, man, I'm, I'm sure I've put points into stealth at some point. Does your so, character sheet say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me a minute. It sure does. Uh, I believe you get some kind of negligible bonus if you're invisible to a stealth check. Yeah. Probably like a good old plus two, something along those lines. Don't look yeah, that up. A good old, That's good enough, old right? <laughs> okay, so Adros is going to hit the blue button on his armor and wait for Nack to help him stealth through this brush on the right-hand side as we make our way to these enemies that are hiding behind this deadlock. How long does this last, Tyler, this new upgrade? So it has a, a, a number of charges that replenish each day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so basically every round consumes one charge. Okay. So stealthing is going to be half speed. Okay. Moving forward. So plot out how far you would like to go to where. And uh, Nack, if you're moving with him, same thing. Make right. me some stealth checks. All right. Not as good as I wanted to do. That is a 19. Mm-hmm. Okay. And- Dross has a 14. Uh, Tyler, while they're doing this, can I sneak around to the left? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> Patrick, while they're doing this, can I sneak around to the left? <laughs> I'll allow it. All, All right. right. Make me a stealth check as well. Okay. Uh, okay. 27. Ooh, Ooh yeah. baby. It is also still night, as, as I mentioned, so it is, it is dark out here. Um, those of you without dark vision might have a, a little bit of difficulty moving around, but for the most part, you are pretty sure most of the undead that you've come up against have been able to, to see in the dark pretty well. Mm-hmm. So how far up would Adras and Ak like to move? I'm going to try to go, and hopefully these tree-looking protrusions are going to help us out a little bit as they're here on the eastern side of the map. Yeah, everywhere everywhere that doesn't look like a, a dirt on the, the ground of the, the jungle will basically be difficult terrain, so you're having to move through uh, pretty, pretty short little bursts to get through it where you're moving to the east and us through here there's a, a pretty clear path until you hit here so it looks like it'll take each of you about five rounds to to get in position from what i'm seeing okay if you are stealthing through the the sides of the jungle yeah. to get up to the ship i need to get a bit sure. closer honestly mm-hmm. on uh on one of those rounds i'm gonna go ahead and also turn on a force field Oh, our Dross is going to turn on for us here. And let's go ahead, and as you are moving in position, getting closer and closer, uh, you hear what sounds like, indeed, a an energy round or something fire from inside the ship. And there's some yelling, and a moment later, four undead soldiers emerge from the interior. Two of them carrying with them Zix in their arms, and they kind of throw her on the ground in, in front of the, the ship. They um, put the helmets down on their bulky armor, and you overhear any of you that speak Eoxian. I think, Mac, you speak? I do. The undead language. As do Uh, I. So does Jubert. I mean, and us. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm not undead. Or am I? (laughs) Well, now I don't believe you. Spookums. That seems seems really suspect. (laughs) Um, I don't know if Raymond, you can hear him from uh, as far away as you are still in the, the back. But up close, Andis, you can hear this one soldier say, Search her, and then execute. No survivors. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and send a message to uh, to everybody, and I'll be like, Guys, I don't know if you can see this. They got six. We got, we got to move now. We're in initiative. Turn order. The first initiative rolls of book six. Oh, Start no. Off right. Oh, no, Tyler. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Tyler. Oh, no. Natural one at the start of the, of the book. Rebecca, is that a 19? Way to yeah, go. Yeah, 19, yeah. Woo, you are ready for it. And I'm combat. way in the back. <laughs> Let me roll for some undead soldiers. I, I roll four. 
but they've got a great initiative, so we'll see where they go. You hear this, Alindra. In the back, you are, what, maybe 100 feet away from, from where Zix is? Yeah, and I can double move and mm-hmm. move 80 feet, so... It is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to move uh, just south of the wing um, of the Drift Rider, and that's my turn. Oh, also, I'm going to turn on my uh, haste circuit. Okay, so that's a, a swift action that actually gives you more movement this turn. Oh, what? So if you want to get all up in their their business, you no, can. No, I'm good. I'm good where I am. <laughs> all right, so mind you, the wing will be providing no cover as it is about 10 feet above your head. That's fine. Uh, I guess it will provide cover from those that are kind of standing on the top of the ship. But True. Oakley, Doakley, that is... Linder's turn next in the turn order is Knack. Knack Feldspar, what you got? If I activated my jetpack uh, and double moved, that would mitigate any negative terrain or a difficult terrain, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're flying over it, so. So I could get 60 feet. So that would be, because my fly speed, I think, is the same as my land speed. I should look at that before I say that. Pretty sure it's 30. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Knack is going to do that uh, just to DB. We gotta, we gotta get over there. There's a lot of guys. I'm sorry, buddy. We gotta move. And I'm gonna jetpack all the way over to here, and that will be my turn. Mm-hmm. So just south of the wing of the drift rider. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed behind I'm gonna, Alindra. I'm gonna drop prone as well. Mm, okay. Uh, so 15 feet. Um, <laughs> so, so you, no, you okay. fly over and then like flop on the ground. Is that the idea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. It will make it will make me harder to hit. <laughs> Just dive it into second base. Got it. <laughs> Not if they melee you. It makes you easier to hit. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next in the turn order, Remy Quindar. All right, so Remy is kind of hmm, back here. But he can he can still tap into his magic missile and hit mm-hmm. the gentleman that's hanging out by the lob, the one with the red dot. So on the it far is east. That is over 120 feet. What, how much dark vision uh, do you have? Uh, it's not over. It's 85 feet. How much dark vision do you have, <laughs> Remy? I think it's always 60. 60? Yeah. Is it the goggles that are giving it to you? Yeah, cause I, but it's still 120. It's 80, 84 feet. Well, then I'll just move up a few feet and mm-hmm. get behind mm-hmm. Adras. So he's going to use his pineal gland just to cast magic missile all willy-nilly. A single magic missile. Two... Yeah, so that is um, 13 points of damage. Alrighty. Got eight of these corpse fleet look like marines have dropped here and on this planet. Lots of damage to track in this battle. We are moving on next in the turn order. Oh, it's not Andis with the 13. It is these corpse fleets. I'm going to make a couple perception checks to see what they see. Mm-hmm. They see Alindra coming at them, as well as Knack on the ground there. Let's see who they're going for. I really wanted to make a Spaceballs joke right there, but just listeners know what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. He was going to say Spaceballs. Yep, all those Spaceballs. <laughs> Great radio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it when Drew feels the need to bring up that he could have made a joke, but not make the joke. <laughs> I'm not going to make the joke. All right, all right. <laughs> We ain't seen Fleem. How about that? Does that work out? No. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. You, sh- you should have just told us that you had a joke to say. This, <laughs> the entirety of this episode is getting cut, so. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> All righty. So, unfortunately, really the only uh, two people that can see right now are in the open, um, and that is Alindra and Knack. The two that are on top of the ship can't see any of of you really right now. What a shame. Many people with with dark vision, whether it be from an armor or some kind of special ability, it's only 60 feet. And past that, it's pretty much full darkness here in the the undergrowth of the jungle. This one, though, can see (laughs) Raimi because he does have 60 feet of dark vision as well and is going to make a couple of shots from behind cover of this log in Raimi's direction. Let's roll his d20. Oh, Natural oh, no. 20 on the second attack. Wow. Ooh. 15 on the first. What is your KAC, Miles? My KAC is 29. I've rolled a 29 on the first Oof. and a 20. 
Natural 20, which of course is going to hit. So let's get some damage going. Oh, <laughs> no. As you are punctured your armor with two acid darts. I hope you guys like acid darts. I have acid resistance. <laughs> there is going to be two acid darts. Puncture your armor. Hope you guys like acid damage. This is acid and piercing for each of these Ooh. darts. Ooh, Throw boy. this first one that is just a regular hit. 22 Ooh, points of no. damage. <laughs> oh, no. no. Ooh, sounds good to me. I rolled a 6 and an 8 on 2d8. Well, let's just double that for this crit. How about? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, rolled oh, yeah. minimum on one of these. So yes. <laughs> not a ton more. That is 26 points of damage on the crit. I have disappointed my family, my tribe, everyone. But there's also, <laughs> there is a critical effect as well. Corrode. Acid, more acid damage as one of these darts just pops inside your armor. You can feel it eating away at your chest. Do you everybody want to know what six books worth of karma is for Miles choosing a bunch of acid spells for Rainy? <laughs> 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 that is that a double attack, and we've got a couple others that are going to be making some acid dart attacks. Um, these two are actually going to try and shoot at Knack on the ground in the back. One attack each. What is your KAC, Drew? My KAC is 26. Including plus two for, for being prone? Then it is 28. Right. I think it's plus four, guys. 30 then, right? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Let's see here. So one hits and one misses because it's also trying to shoot through the scrum. That is uh, a few of their undead compatriots moving up to get around Alindra. So one acid dart coming to you for 17 points of damage. Now this is half piercing, half acid. And if these two step up to you and have their dart rifles slung on their back, they have... It looks like integrated into their armor pulse gauntlets. Alindra, and they come up. Each of them is going to try and swing at you. So first, melee attack. Oh, want to be a want to be a sixteen, but rolled an eight on the dice. What is your case? Twenty-seven. It's this first one, obviously, a miss. Let's go for a second attack. An eighteen on the dice. That's a hit. Oh. And this is going to be bludgeoning and sonic damage as these are kind of like a shotgun sonic pow, pow. <laughs> I almost knocked my my water bottle over <laughs> doing it. Or like, you guys can't see me punching the air but uh, it, it's a sonic punch to your to your chest this damage come at me bro <laughs> okay well 18 points um half of that bludgeoning half of that sonic and let's see these other ones can't really see from where they're at let me just double check here oh my gosh their turn is an eternity there's so there's many eight of them, of them. <laughs> yep. yeah there's a lot of these guys but that is the entire turn um, actually i think a couple of these guys hearing fire are just going to move out further on the wing to try and get a better view those of you with dark vision can kind of see them or you hear metal boots clamping on the wing of the drift rider we are on to andis 147 you see them moving forward a couple of them throwing punches at alindra a few of them still standing defensively around zix what's andis got your bird i think my range on this is 50 feet so i'm not trying to take any negatives here i'm gonna engage the guy who is on Zix right now, and I'm going to spin a move action tracking, and I'm going to track both of the ones that are on Zix. Ooh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to shoot my gun. My gun. My gun! <laughs> uh, that's not quite a super hit, but it's a very, very good hit. 18 uh, on the dice. I'd say that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, that's going to be 31 points of damage. Oh, sorry. Uh, 35 versus EAC. Yes. I, I forget think. myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can I think we can <laughs> assume that uh, anything over 30, I'll give it to you guys. That's going to be it. I'll, uh, I'll so give it. Thir- 31 points of damage on the uh, the fuchsia one. At the bottom of the turn order, Adros Varanus. Skulking through the jungle, invisible still. What's what's Adros doing, Tyler? Oh, Adros is going to move up into kind of the open, wide mm-hmm. open area. 
Okay, and you're invisible, so he ha- no one sees you. I, uh, he, yeah, I, yes. Uh, and he's going to make, he's going to throw a star knife at someone, but the, but it depends. I want to throw it at one of the guys up on the wing, but we're dealing with some height issues. I don't know. It, I don't know if I can see the guy near the tip of the wing very easily. Uh, yes, yes, you can. Okay, then we're going to throw the star. He's just within, I believe. 60 feet of dark vision from where you're standing. Okay, we're going to throw the star knife at him. Okay, you have a star knife. (laughs) Yes, so this is fun. I had, uh, during our little two or three day break, I had uh, Andis whip me up a a star knife for for fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw it at somebody now because my... uh, We'll we'll see how that works. All right, well, I hope you hit because if you don't, it's going into the darkness of the jungle forever. I mean, that is fine. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so hey, I wing this, 19 I wing on the this, dice yeah 19 on the dice <laughs> uh, and uh, 37 I think we've assumed that anything above a 30 is a hit <laughs> yep. it does 30 points of piercing damage and then here's the fun part this is where we get to have some fun on the podcast I also had Raimi whip up a few fusions, one of which the entangling fusion hmm. so this guy's entangled as per the fusion. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I'll explain. This is just like tea time with Tyler no all over asked. again. <laughs> no one asked Tyler. We can look up Entangled on our own. Oh, oh really? Because no. I wanted to explain it. You move half speed and you've got some negatives to what? Everything, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. But your guy can make some checks to get out of it. That's all I wanted to make sure you knew. Okay. Um, so he's in a, a good firing position on top of the wing, so probably not going anywhere. Oh, D- that breaks your invisibility, correct? That does. And then the second part Wing of the fun turning. bit is I snap my fingers and the star knife is back in my hands. Oh, returning, eh? No, called. Very, oh, yes. very big difference between returning and called. Yes. Yeah, one is like a boomerang and the other is... Uh, Teleportation. Yeah. Cool. Great. That is turn one. Let's let's get this moving. Turn two, Alindra Vallis. Okay, I am right next to two of these guys. I am going to bring down my solar weapon twice and see how it goes. Uh, just on Skull Guy. On a single one of them. I mean, they're all they're undead. They're all Skull Guys. <laughs> That's true. That's a twenty-one to it. Oof. No, less yeah. than that. A lot less. Seventeen. No, eighteen. Two eighteen times. against KAC is a miss. Yes. All right. Let's hope the second one goes better. Oh, I'm Photon in tune. By the way, this is round two. Oh. Fingers crossed. Oh no. That was worse oh, actually. What is going on? All right, oh no. That says, yeah, that's 17. A four on the dice, a three on the dice. These <sighs> two don't look too concerned as they're dodging nimbly past your, your Solarian blade lighting up the jungle around you. Can I take a guarded step back since I have my haste circuit on? Yeah. Cool. Let's go on to Nack Feltzbar. All right, Nack is still uh, prone. Uh, on mm-hmm. the, the ground here. I think he's going to stand up just because these guys are now in range of being able to move and melee him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, he is going to uh, use his minor disruption pistol. Uh, he's going to boost that and shoot at uh, the one that was just, uh, that Alindra was just attacking. Get him! Blue, blue. Ooh! Ooh! Felt that in my bones! So that is a, that is a ooh, natural 20. Natural 20. So that is going to be uh, 10 base damage plus 14 and the staggered effect. And that's boosted. So that's another D6 damage mm-hmm. as well. Uh, and that is another Ooh. five damage for the D6 for the boost. Oh, uh, Drew, the, uh, the the boosted damage gets double. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's another oh. six damage oh. on top of that. Nicely uh, done. So 35 that, points of damage? Is that right? Man, he's yeah. like Anderson in here. What? What? I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> and Nack is doing what Alindra could not. <laughs> <laughs> Ramy Quindar, we are back to you, Miles. All right. So Ramy is going to cast uh, a spell against the same uh, corpse fleet members. Yeah, yeah, this one that just hit you with two acid darts. You're gonna try and yeah, uh, him and his buddy because he is casting since no one's around. Explosive <laughs> blast. Yes, oh, your, your fireball of explosion. No, my ship. Oh, all the <laughs> dice. Ooh, so pretty good on damage. I've got to make a couple of reflex saves. I'll do that now. I'll do first the one that you've already hit. Let's hit you. 
rolled. Oh boy, what's the DC of this? It's twenty. I believe it's DC nineteen. Is it nineteen? Okay, so I've rolled a thirteen. That one makes it for half, and the other one I've rolled an eleven, and that is a failure. All right, so uh, the one that fails gets forty points of damage, and the one that passed gets twenty points of damage. Already, yep. Um, wow. So about uh, about sixty in total here. We are spreading out damage across this battalion of corpse fleet. And we are on to their turn. Let's go ahead and this one is going to see what has happened here. Sees that there are maybe some other combatants in the the wild around. And it's about 10 feet away from Alindra. Pulls out a, a small device from a belt pouch, perhaps, and lobs it at your feet. Knack mm-hmm. and Alindra, can you both give me a reflex safe? Alindra, watch your step. Well, ooh. oh my god! Natural one on the reflex. Well, we almost made it to the uh. It's been fun, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Drew rolled really well. Okay, so it is a small grenade that lands right between Knack and Alindra. Let me double check on the range here, and this produces a huge thwomph that lights up the jungle around you. And Alindra, unfortunately, is looking right at it as it happens. And is blinded. Oh man! Oh, oh no! no. Round. Yeah, oh. Maximum, maximum round on the blindage. Ugh. That's not what you want to see. Man. <laughs> oh man. Knack has saved. I wouldn't be too too excited because the same thing is happening over in Andis Town. The one that you have shot is going to toss a grenade out into the jungle. Go ahead and make me a reflex save. Oh, hey, this has the explosive property. Oh, boy, I get a plus two on this one because of my explosive defense unit. It is indeed like a a blast radius, um, uh, a, whatchamacallit, a flashbang grenade that they're they're tossing out. Yep, yep, Explo- yeah, explosive weapon property. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 21. Yep, that is enough. You're able to duck away uh, yeah. from oh. the blast. The entangled one on top of the wing step forward and is going to try and shoot down. Actually, make a shot back at Adros now that he can see them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, there's a couple people that can see Adros at this yeah. moment. So, oh no, that's be, not true. I think it might be shoddy time. Yeah. Oh god. Guys on the wing can. Um, guys only gonna make one attack. Entangled. What is your KAC? It's different now. I, I picked up some. Mm-hmm. Uh, I picked up some new armor thanks to Null Knight. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's uh, KAC KAC 31. I have rolled a 12. It is minus two because this guy is entangled. That is a miss. And the other two that are going to fire at you are actually going to try and do a couple of attacks. These look like very professionally trained undead sharpshooters. So they're pretty good at making these ranged attacks. So let's go ahead and make. That's what I love to hear. They certainly have a lot of adjectives. 4d20. Okay, please roll in the single digits. Yeah, not not rolling too well here. That is... I think the, the I've rolled the highest a twelve, which is not going to be a hit. So I'm just Ooh. you the the <laughs> jungle around you is lit up by these faintly glowing um, purple darts. <laughs> you see them flashing by you. Uh, this other one is indeed going to try and fire back at Raimi. A couple of attacks. 16 on the first die and 17 on the second. That's two hits, baby. Oh, no. Oh, well, yeah. bye. <laughs> Miles, oh, yeah. you ever want to play a, you ever want to play an android who used to be a cultist? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to having some time off. Zix might be alive at the end of this. I am not playing a rat. 17 <laughs> points of damage on the first, 18 points of damage on the second piercing and acidic oh, yeah no, this guy's just found his target maybe maybe don't explode him and his friends that's their turn and we're back to andis i'm going to continue to take shots at the uh the the fella who just whipped a grenade at me and i'm gonna go ahead and make two shots on this guy okay Ooh. i'm getting crazy here going ham yeah he tried to smoke you out of the jungle slightly first, better first one <laughs> is a one our first one one. of the evening (laughs) oh boy first critical fail that we're going to our website who would have thought season two would happen at the end of november oh man (laughs) 
Not gonna lie, that's gonna be a hard fight. You guys need to come this together. Fight me right <laughs> now. <laughs> We're going to cosmiccrit.com forward slash critical dash fail dash deck forward slash and making a ranged attack. This one, oh boy, hopefully gonna be pretty easy. It's submitted by Rabbit. It's called Pronking Banana Peel. And as you line up this first shot, your foot slips on an old banana peel that uh, maybe <laughs> fell, fell out of the jungle and landed we on the ground. In the jungle, the space, and it makes a, sense. The space banana. Oh peel. yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this space jungle has tons of bananas. It's n- <laughs> the ground is just littered with them. It's just nothing but that's bananas. Why it's, <laughs> that's why it's difficult terrain. Uh, succeed on an immediate reflex save or fall prone. This will stop your your. Well, I guess it won't stop your second attack from going off, but make it a little more <laughs> more difficult. Oh no. Oh. Oh, you <laughs> natural, one, <laughs> natural one! Oh, on the ground. Oh. Yep. So I got. I, I got that sweet, sweet plus four to my AC against ranged attacks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this second attack does still go off, but you're now shooting through a massive patch of jungle, blowing the the, the leaves off of trees and, and bushes. <laughs> bananas falling down all around <laughs> you. <laughs> even more bananas. Um, uh, what is what is your second attack? Uh, that's going to be a 19 versus EAC. <laughs> Against EAC. That is a hit. Believe it or not. Oh, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Your oopsie is, is still a hit. Yeah. What's the damage? <laughs> Thank you, Magic Banana. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be 22 points of damage. Okay, yeah. You're still landing that shot, and that takes us back to Adros. Oh, boy. Uh, Adros is immune he- to darts is immune to darts, thankfully. Oh, thankfully. Uh, First, he's going to do a a move action. He doesn't want to go through this patch of difficult terrain that's unfortunately between him and a lot of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. There are the sharpshooters that are off to his uh, kind of forward right, but... Yeah, Raimi no seems to be in a fight with them, so if he <laughs> goes in there, he seems Raimi to be doing four, great. four acid darts in his chest. <laughs> what you got, Tyler? Uh, so Dross is going to uh, close. He's going to move up so he, where he's like half in between the group that's off to his left and half in between the sharpshooters that are off to his right. Okay, so and then just in his, right in the uh, open. Yeah, right in the open. He's got the star knife in his in his right hand but in his left hand he holds a grenade that he made a long time ago and i think it's time to use said grenade he's gonna throw it at the sharpshooter that is has been haranguing Raimi. oh okay and it is a flashbang oh so basically the same thing that they're using on you yeah uh pretty much so that's gonna be a 28 uh yeah that's a hit okay yeah so uh I mean, you know how they work. Uh, yeah. So this reflex save I have made, I believe, uh, I've rolled a 20. I believe that's going to be enough. <sighs> I think that's going to be enough, yeah. unfortunately. If it's just a Mark 1. Oakley doakley. And that is bringing us to the top of turn three, Alindra Vallis. Okay, question about blinded. Mm-hmm. And when, so it says that I have to succeed at an acrobatic sh- skill check to move faster than half speed. What if I just want to take a guarded step? So that that's no problem, but that's you know to move half your your speed. It's a DC ten acrobatics, which I think you make automatically. Is that correct? Do you have a at least fourteen in acrobatics? No, nowhere near. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm thinking of athletics. Yeah, I'm good um, at athletics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not no, so much you, acrobatics. <laughs> you, you can make a a guarded step, I believe, without. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm going to take a guarded step to be sort of in the middle of these undead guys. And this is turn three, so I'm going to supernova. All righty. Oh, Don't man. need to make an attack and roll. There's no... Being, being blind, she's not, she's not really sure who she's going to hit here. So she's going to send out a telepathic message to any of her allies who are nearby. Like, sorry if this hits you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's well but I don't out. think I will. <laughs> are you just doing 10 foot burst? 15. 15, got it. Uh, so that's... 34 unless they succeed at a reflex save. Let me make a couple of these. First one, I've rolled a nine. That is a failure. Second is a four, so they both failed. So the guy up on the wing is too far away because he's up on the wing, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Cool. With 15 feet. So both of these two taken 34. No, is that 34? Yeah, 34. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, this this one that uh, 
knack and critted and you've exploded next to isn't looking too great. And that brings us back to Knack. Oh. All right. I would like to use, hmm, I can't use get them on two different things, can I? Uh, well, yes, you can get them everything with an RP. Yeah, but I'm not quite in range of everything. I want to, once again, get him the uh, the one that I have been attacking uh, that is now flanking with Alindra. Yep. And I would like to also... I can't attack alongside this, though. That's... Hey, uh, uh, Dingus, your your epidermis is showing. Clever faint. Okay. <laughs> uh, was this 30? Yes, so I also now have a uh, convincing liar as uh, one of my uh, expertise talents. Mm-hmm. So right, so you can I either do, choose to re-roll, right? I can either choose to re-roll or choose to roll my expertise dice based on how whether I pass this check. Pretty sure 30 will do it. Pretty sure. Let's double check. I don't think they have anything in the way of sense motive, so 30 will be enough. All right. Uh, so this guy is now flat-footed and get for <laughs> anybody to attack. Oh, okay. So that's that's all you're doing Cause, there, right? Cause, standard yeah, because yep. I, don't, I don't have clever attack. I have clever feint. So. Okay. Big turn. Going back to Raimi Quindar, the back of the jungle here. <laughs> So, uh, Raimi is going to, uh, cast Explosive Burst again. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm, surprised. I'm honestly surprised. That's why Dross didn't want to get anywhere near those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Giant explosion, another fireball ripples throughout the jungle. Bit of it scorching the Drift Rider. How much is this damage? Uh, 35. Roll some reflex saves. First one has made it with an 18. Second has failed. I've rolled a six on the dice. That is the one that you have done the good deal of damage to. I guess they've both taken a good deal of damage, but 35, half of that is going to be 17. Mm-hmm. So one takes 35 and one takes 17. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're hiding out behind this log. Gives them a little bit of a boost here, but they've taken a good deal of damage between the two of them. Well, I'm also going to move back a little bit. Okay. Out of range of their yeah. pistol. You could also okay. probably get in cover behind that log. Yeah, didn't didn't seem to help. With yeah, uh, I've well, taken through. over like eighty points of damage, <laughs> so, uh, so the law can go pronk itself. Guess what? Now it is time for Adros to take those attacks. Let's see. We've got a couple that are in melee range of Alindra. They're going to make their attacks. Yeah, I think I think five of these <laughs> these undead see Edros in the open. See him tossing grenades. They're going to make some attacks against the giant Vesk in heavy armor. Okay, I'm going to... Are these against KAC? Because if so, I'm going to try and deflect the the last one that hits me. The last one that hits you. Okay. Because I don't, I can't see your roll before I declare this. So I have to... I'm just going to say, if you hit me multiple times, I'm going to do it on the, like, last one. Okay, well, I'm just going to... I'm going to make a single attack for I think both of these guys on the wing. This one first. Ten on the dice. The second is a 19, which is probably going to be a hit. All right. Uh, is that all try the and, Oh, so you don't want to reflect that one? Uh, yeah, I'm going to... Uh, I'll reflect whichever the last one that hits me. So, yeah. Okay, so this one is half piercing and half acid damage. Ooh, 22 points of damage in total. So 11 and 11. And so... Okay. I take a little bit to do. Yeah, that acid getting through. Uh, Let me make some attacks here on the wing. That's not it. Okay, one miss. A couple misses. And these two behind the log. Don't see Raimi anymore. Make a couple of attacks each on you. Now I've got to roll pretty high on these. 17, that is a hit. That one. Uh, Natural one is a miss. (laughs) And I rolled a four and a 13. So just one more hit. We'll call that one the deflect. So try, try to deflect. Uh, let's see. Oof, I rolled an eight on the deflection, so a 26 altogether. Now, does that include your plus five for the deflection? This time it does. Oh, fortunately, that is not enough. 31. All right, I didn't think, I didn't think so. I rolled just what I needed to, to hit your, your armor. So yeah, let's do some more damage. Bare minimum damage, so... Six points piercing, seven points acid, and let's move on to Alindra, who's flanked here. This guy is going to throw out one melee attack against her. And I'm sorry, is your KC 27? 27. Okay, so 
one melee attack, a 12. Would be a miss if he was not flanking. That is a hit. And it's 2d6 damage, uh, 17 points of damage for the first hit. And now the second guy is going to try and make a couple, throwing a couple punches. Seven on the first dice is a miss. And a 15 on the second, I believe, is going to be a hit. Let me do let me do a bunch of math right now. <laughs> uh, yes, that is just a hit with two attacks for under 17 points of damage. Another 17. That is the oh no, I've got one more. Uh, that is going to try and hit Andis out in the jungle with a single uh-huh. attack, even though he's I'm, prone. And, I meant to uh, do this. <laughs> mostly um, big cover. <laughs> I, think I need to roll 20 here. And I don't, so that is a miss. <laughs> fail up, uh, guys, fail up. <laughs> but, but we're back <laughs> to your turn, Andis, what you got. All right, let's see here. Uh, I'm finding this position to be very advantageous. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to pop off a miracle worker since I can do that twice per day now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that right now. And, oh gosh, I really would I really would like to shoot this flat-footed and gottomed guy, but I'm going to go for I'm going to go for uh, the one who's who's uh, sort of shooting at me. We're in a when our we're in a Nice little sniper bi- battle. Mm-hmm. Shooting them back. All right. That's going to be a 23 Ooh. to 20, hit. 23, even shooting through this full cover of the jungle, <laughs> is a hit. Just like just like, just like, like the bushes part and like this blast of, of sonic energy comes through and uh, hits the guy for 31 points of damage. Ooh, uh, he's still up, but oh boy, he's taking a lot of sonic damage over and down for him. That's the third time you've hit him, I think. Yeah. Um, Edros Veronis, back to you. Got a couple darts sticking out of your armor. What's Edros going to uh, They're fine. Edros sees uh, this opening created by Andis on this soldier that's kind of standing over uh, Zix. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's going to drop free action, drop the star knife swift action bring out a hammer and standard action charge uh right at this guy pulling up at the 10 foot reach mark for the hammer and we're going to use a fun little ability called soldier's onslaught which means i get to make two attacks at the end of this charge yeah now can can you use that with an unwieldy whip oh you're right i will Uh, allow you to take it back if you want to pull out a weapon on uh, your charge No, I'll just do this. I'll just do the single attack. I single. Stick, I stick to my hammer decision because mm-hmm. I want to hit this man with a hammer. That's going to be a twenty-six against KAC. That is a hit. That's jeez, oh, thirty-seven points of damage. Thirty-seven. <laughs> We have fun here saying 37. Even after the massive Sonic beatdown and a swoop hammer to his back, he's still up. Whoa. He's got some tanky. Still up. That two attacks might have done it. We'll never know until next turn. Uh, turn number four at the top is Alindra Vallis. Still blind. Turn two of blindness. What you got, Alindra? Now you've got a couple on you. You can feel the, the air moving around as they're whiffing some attacks. One punches you in the gut with sonic bludgeoning damage. Okay, so with total concealment, which is what they have because I'm blinded, mm-hmm. that means an additional roll to determine attack yep, chance, it's a, is that right? It's a 50-50 mischance, even if you hit. Uh, yeah, gets a little right, rough. rough. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a guarded step back to get out of flanking position until they move back into flanking position. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Alindra is going, oh gosh. Um, so I don't know what to do because I'm blinded. There's not a whole lot I can do. You can make a single Flash attack and, and pray. <laughs> yeah. Uh pray real hard. I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go crazy. Uh so Alindra is going to uh reach deep inside of her and uh, speak to Floria and go into Graviton attunement. I'm going to use crush mm. on the guy to just to my west. Okay, so this is the one that Knack has given him. If you want to go for the one that Knack has point, I'll allow it. But if you go for this other one, uh, it it does require sight to to target someone. So that is that's going to be a also a fifty fifty mischance. Oh, so no matter what I do, except for blowing up as a supernova, I'm going to well, have to see them. Technically, I don't even know if you'd be able to to use this ability because it does require be able to to see. 
someone. I'll allow you to use it on the one that Nack has got him because he's like, no, to the to the right, a little more, mm. up, up a little bit. But that's that's up to you. Uh, uh, I don't like this. I just want to um, kill one of these guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. I'll 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 crush the guy that has get him on it. All right. So this is a fortitude save. Yes. Let's make it. I've rolled a four. That's a fifth. Yes. Good. Yeah. So nice. staggered. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. This guy's not having a good day. <laughs> uh, so he's flat-footed, staggered. <laughs> Got get him on him. Uh, that is your turn, Nack Feldspar. Back to you. You see Alindra kind of floundering. What do you want to do, Drew? All right. So for my move action, I would like to get him, and I would like to use my clever improv to have get him apply to everything. Unfortunately, in 60 feet, meaning the two sharpshooters over here on the east are not going to uh, benefit from this. And I don't know if I can get the two on the top of the Drift Rider because they are on top, and I don't know if I can see them. Yeah, be- yeah, they're peeking over the side of the wing, so we got six of these corpse fleet soldiers. Excellent. Sights. So the funny thing about Clever Faint is that his flat-footed uh, nature ends uh, after my turn, so I would mm-hmm. like to pull out my minor disruption pistol one more time and shoot this son of a gun in his face. Go right ahead. That is a... 21 to hit against EAC. Yes. That's a hit. Yes. For, uh, for nine points of damage. Oh, minimum damage, but still helpful, helpful, helpful. (laughs) Let's see. Two ones on those two D six. Yeah. I'm very disappointed in that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but everyone's got get them on them now. Raimi nursing wounds back in the jungle. What you got? Uh, Nursing wounds is right. I'm going to take one of my, uh, MK2 healing serums and try to kind of help myself out. Alrighty. Rolling some D8s. Alright, so that's 15 points of so, HP back. Alrighty. You're down into hit points? Uh, very much so, yeah. Ooh, boy. <laughs> I mean, you, you did like 80 something points of damage on me. Yeah, I don't like to toot my own horn, but yes, I almost did kill you. I mean, um. <laughs> It is the enemy's turn. This one is just going to step forward on Alindra, and the staggered one doesn't get a chance to attack. And actually, it sees that uh, you have been affected by this blind grenade, so it's going to just try and move around the backside and flank with its friend. You may make an attack of opportunity, Alindra, but it's going to be... It's going to have concealment. Oh, natural two on the dice. Natural two. Natural two. It's... uh, Mm. Still a hit because um, of get him. Yes. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Uh, actually, no. It's not. It's not flat foot, right? Oh, oh no. Oh. No, that's a twenty-one against KAC. Oh, so. It would have been too good if oh, two. Oh, oh. It's a p- okay. potential. So actually, I'm flat-footed because I'm blinded. So yeah, I that doesn't. Oh yeah, no, you're right. I couldn't take an attack of opportunity anyway. Oh. Oh, oh the honesty End that's happening turn. right now. And now. <laughs> <laughs> Good call out. I forgot all about. Uh, all right, so this guy's flanking you now, and this other one is just going to make a couple of attacks. Uh, 16 on the first dice, and ooh, eight on the second. I believe the 16 is just a hit, so a single hit. Half of this is bludgeoning, half of it is sonic 16 damage. And the rest of these guys, we don't have too, too many targets still. Edros has moved out of range of the two sharpshooters behind the log in the east. The other ones are going to move wing. And this one that has taken a ton of damage that you've just hit with the the swoop hammer, it's going to indeed move forward and try and punch you while his friend flanks from behind. Because they don't know you can't be flanks. They're going to still try. So let me make a couple of... KAC punching attacks. 18 on the dice. That's a hit. And 7 on the dice. That's a nice one. Okay, so this one that you've nearly killed is going to try and get his momentary revenge here. And 14 points of damage. Half bludgeoning. Half sonic. And yep. And then these other two up on top of the wing are going to try and shoot down at you. And make it a single attack each. They both miss. Shooting into combat. 
got a really good KAC these days. So that is their He's got turn. a good KAC. Yeah. And it's one for seven. We're back to you. Jungle floor. All right. Yeah. So I'm on the drum- jungle floor. I'm curious if I can activate my jetpack and just start flying from here or if I'd have to like, get back up. Nope. It just gives you a fly speed so you can pick yourself right off the jungle floor. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to fly sort of out of the the coverage. In fact, I think you did that in episode um, 47 <laughs> yeah. or so. I want to call it the Andis Maneuver now. <laughs> where you just move. Like, I put, put, my, put my hover skates up underneath me and I say, <laughs> go, go, Andis skates. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> zoop, zoop. <laughs> so, so I'm going to fly out of the coverage. I'm like 10 feet up in the air. And I'm coming right for this uh, staggered dead gentleman. I've got a got my gun trained right on that fool, the one on Alindra. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. It's gonna be a 32 on the yep. hit. 13 on the dice. That's a hit. All right. That's gonna be a, a 20. Sorry, we got big get him right. Big mm-hmm. get him. Oh yeah. So that's gonna be. 32 points of damage. Ooh, 32. Oh, yeah, with miracle work. Yeah. All right. He's taken a lot of damage. Still up. No one has dropped oh, yet. Unbelievable. In this <laughs> Maybe we'll have one right now, though. Adros, bottom of turn four. We're going long. All right. Adros, he's got he, these two guys are just trying to chip away at him. They're not doing much to him, though. I don't feel like he feels too threatened, but he does see a Lydra in a pinch in a bind. So he's gonna he's gonna go ahead and swift action the hammer back into his gloves, and <laughs> I'm gonna make your day, Patrick, because I'm gonna move. Uh, you're gonna get three attacks of opportunity if you want these, buddy. Because I'm moving? gonna move. I'm gonna move pretty much right next to Alindra, and as I'm going by, I'm gonna say, Alindra, move back, move, uh, move, move forward five feet. And uh, while I'm moving, I'm gonna take out my blades. And uh, but yeah, you get you get I count three. So you're you're not gonna make an attack this turn. I am, but I'm letting you resolve those first. Okay. Well, are, are you moving? You want to? Yeah. Oh, of course. I'm gonna. They're gonna punch the ever living gobstopper out of you. Uh, <laughs> probably roll Sound. poorly here. These are all misses. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to use my new feat called Lunge, which means I can increase Ooh. my attack range. And this guy who is having a very bad day, Mr. Stagger, <laughs> I guess we're going to nickname him, is going to get a he's going to get a lunged attack with the uh, Vorpal Sword. Ooh, all righty. Bringing out the Vorpal. This will give me a minus two to my AC for the rest <laughs> of the round, but I think a firm, firm hit. Yeah, uh, 36, 38, somewhere in there, <laughs> that territory. Yeah, and that's a 30, 39 points of damage. Uh, 41 if this is ultimate get em. It is oh, yeah. big get em, so. Uh, with that, snicker snack, head goes popping off. This one is dead. <laughs> dead again! That's what you get. <laughs> Redeaded! <laughs> this is our first double casualty of the night. Uh, <laughs> one down, seven to go. Oh, God. Top of turn five, Alinda <laughs> Valis. Still blind. All right. Uh, yeah, still blind. I'm going to move back, take a guarded step back, and still Graviton attuned uh, this turn two. I'm going right. to use Crush on this other guy, knowing that I have a missed chance. Okay. All right. I'll allow it. Roll me a D100. Roll over uh, 51, 51 or above. That'll be hit. 98. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I... <laughs> I have failed the fortitude save, so this one is staggered. Yes! <laughs> oh, jeez. You're uh. reaching out psychically, feeling where this one is. So this one is staggered, as we have said before, this crushing ability, graviton ability here, kind of pinning him down a little bit. And while they are unable to be stunned, I'm going to let the staggered go through. That's how nice of a GM I am. <laughs> <laughs> Knackfeld's borrower back to you, Drew. What you got? Get him! And yes, we're going to be spending that RP to have it apply to everybody that I can see, which is sadly fewer. I think I'm only hitting three this time. I don't know if I can see the the one on just the edge of the wing of the Drift Rider right now. Yeah, no, he's got, sufficiently got. Sweet! So that's at least four of them that have super get him. And uh, hey, uh, and, and to the one that is kind of between Andis, Adras, and Alindra, hey, Chumbly! Looks like you might need to reload. Clever fate! That's going to be a 26. So 15 
plus one and a half CR if they don't have a scent motive. Is that correct? I believe that is going to be enough. Okay. 26. This one here. Oh, boy. So th- to this guy is marking them up. fainted and get them. Have at it, folks. <laughs> I did my part. Let's go ahead and go to Ramy Quindar. All right. So uh, Ramy's going to pop back up here behind the log, and he is going to use his uh, X-Gen gun um, against the one he's done the most damage to. This gentleman kind of hiding behind the log across from him. All right. Back in a shootable position. Uh, and that, that is the sound of bullets hitting this uh, this log of this felled tree as they you take show no that log who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for moving right back into uh, position uh, as one of these guys is going to move out from over the log and the other one is going to try and shoot you back with two attacks because he's, he's had a really good look at this. Oh no! If six is going to be a miss. Your KAC is 25? Uh, 29. 29. Okay, yeah, so this, this first one is just a, just a hit, I believe. 30. Let's roll some damage. Oh, and this other one gets a, an attack, a single attack. Uh, 17, so two hits. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. 15 on this first die, minus three. Okay, so I've only rolled a 29 on this first attack, and your KAC is what? 29. Okay, so if you are behind the log, that is providing you a little bit of a, a bonus. So <laughs> this one is just a miss. Uh, but the other one, the 17, a hit, 16 points of damage. Now we've got a couple more over here. We've got Andis popping up in the air. I'm going to accrue a few attacks. Oh, these other guys, I think, are going to make some, some ranged, shoddy attacks as well against Edros. So let's do first a couple against Edros. Natural 20 on one of them. Oof. Oh, no. Like that. And is, you say you are indeed at minus two to your armor class at this moment? That is correct. Minus 12 is a hit as well. Let's roll damage here. 18 points of damage from one dart. And let's roll the critical. Critical is 30 points of damage. So 15 piercing, 15 acidic. Mm-hmm. And... You're trying to get to save against this, but it will also be four points uh, additional corrode damage from their their critical effect. And let's give a couple shots against Andis 147. And what is your KAC these days? You'll never take me alive, coppers. Uh, <laughs> my KAC is 28. That's kind of the point. I've rolled an eight on the first attack. This one on the far back of the wing misses, and the other one hits. Oof. Uh, for 18 points of damage. And All right. this one is going to move forward on Alindra. <laughs> and that is, that is their entire turn. All seven of them. Uh, and as we're back to you. I'm going to switch my focus. Ah, that tracked guy's not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take a shot at the one who's all uh, staggered and confused. And uh, just that, that, poor, that poor schmuck. <laughs> Okay, just gonna gonna get him so good. Oh, I already got him. You don't have to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna (laughs) gonna do this kind of get him. Uh, That's gonna be a 33 to hit. (laughs) A hit. (laughs) And 29 points of damage. Okay, yeah, not looking too good. Taking a couple of major hits. The one that is now on top of Alindra. Edros Verhanis, we are on to you. Oh, let's see. Why is this a hard decision? You've got a sword in your hand. You're a soldier. Just go and attack. We know what you're going to do, Tyler. Oh, no, I want to keep it a mystery. No. (laughs) Oh, I guess I'll start working on these other two guys. I'm going to make a charge and a double attack at the end of it. Uh, Let's see. First attack. Now, is this your your onslaught feature coming coming through? Yes, it is. That's going to be a 24. Uh, to hit, that's a hit. All right, 41 points of damage. Jeez. Slam. 43 oh, points. Oh, no. 43 natural points 20. of damage for the first one, for the record. Oh, well, it won't matter. That guy is dead. see. So, natural 20. Yeah. So, what's the damage first? Well... The damage from the nat- from the crit is going mm-hmm. to be uh, sixty nine, dude. <laughs> 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 the 
plus severe wound if he's still up after the 43 from the first attack. All told, 100 and something. 112. I went to the calculator. He is still up. Jeez. Okay, what? severe wounds. Let's roll 2d20. Let's do it. Valhalla. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, uh, well, I rolled a 9 and an 8, so I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. I think it is. <laughs> this table. That might be general. general. Uh, that is indeed, which is a bleed effect. Fortunately, you cut open a huge wound across thing, this thing's chest. It bleeds nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Maybe some black ichor comes out, but it doesn't look like it's affecting it at all. Uh, darn. Uh, have you seen many a creature <laughs> you do 112 damage to in a turn and it doesn't drop? Yeah, that's kind of alarming. <laughs> yeah, maybe you guys should f- focus fire <laughs> for at least one turn until you can drop something. <laughs> turn six. Alindra Vallis. You've got your vision back. Finally, having used Crush and noticing that these guys seem to be a little more resistant to such things um, than usual, she's going to become unattuned. (laughs) That was a fun experiment. (laughs) Um, And I can't enter photon attunement in the same turn, right? Like, I have to wait. I believe so, yes. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm unattuned, so I don't get my photon bonus, but I'm going to um, bring down my solar weapon on the guy that is right in front of me. I'm going to do it twice, which is probably stupid, but I've rolled so low so far. I've got to roll high at some point, right? He's, he's flat-footed and get him so that's the math. Yeah, so, all right, here goes. This is try number one. Hey, that guy's dead. Hey, that's a good roll. <laughs> all right, all right. So 17? that's going to do... Uh, 30 damage, yeah. 32, right? With 32 with big get him. Oh, yeah, get him. All right, and turn him. Still up. That's a, oh, that's a 19 to hit. Five on the dice. Uh, Does that include get him? No, that'd be a 21. Uh, 21 against KAC is a miss. Oh. If he wasn't flat footed, that's a hit. (gasps) Yes! Yes! Teamwork. Nice. Almost exactly what you need. All right. Good so call. 33. 33 damage. Uh, 35 damage. 35 damage. I'm sorry. <laughs> no one no one remembers that uh, Drew is here playing on the, the podcast, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. We, we, we all just need like a big sign that like sits next to our monitor that says, plus get him. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's so important. Had, and I, I joke you not, if... If Drew wasn't here, he would still be up. Had 32 hit points. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Down with the the big get him in, in this oh, turn. Man. So two down, six to go. We are on Knack Feldspar. Seen a couple of these guys drop in front of you. All right. Not knowing what our, our future is going to be, I'm reluctant to spend much more RP in this. Mm-hmm. But... With the the one that is uh, menacing uh, my good friend EV at Drosferanus, I would like to point to it and say, get him, and then say something clever that this idiot is doing wrong. Clever faint. <laughs> Natural one is not going to do it. Oh, 20. however. I, I'm, I imagine you want to re-roll that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my convincing liar to re-roll that. Oh, <laughs> Natural toot. Natural toot. Wow. That is not going to be enough. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. I've been so useful, but now I've failed. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Don't worry. I kind of think he probably doesn't have long to to last. This one took, what, 112 damage last turn? Yeah, that's um, true. I forgot about that. <laughs> let's go back to Remy Quindar. Ooh, he had a, a dart sticking right out of the log, <laughs> like right where your face is with your heavy machine gun. What do you got, Miles? Uh, Raby's going to shift focus to the jerkwad that moved up forward. Oh, boy. <laughs> not not the one you've done a, a ton of damage to? <laughs> no. Oh, boy. And So this is one cool. is out in the open, so it will be easier to hit. Yeah, and I'm going to cast Arcing Surge. Ooh, okay, so. Reflex save here. If it was still behind the log, getting a little bit of a bonus uh, to reflex save from the cover, that would be a success, but I've rolled an 18 on the dice, so full damage here. All right, so that is 37 points of damage. It is still up, but this one is now looking really hurt. 
And mm. then Raimi is going to scooch on back. <laughs> Moving on back into the jungle. Well, don't you worry. <laughs> this guy is going to follow on his turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so much woods. So much woods. <laughs> but it's okay because because they move, he only gets a single attack. Oh. Uh, and you are getting some cover here. So let's see what the dice say. Oh, five on the dice. That is a miss. All right. So they do like a whole Matrix style dodge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you mean you mean like scrambling into the woods? I like I like I like to think that that Remy tries to do a Matrix style dodge, but it just misses completely anyway. It's not cool at all. The two corpse fleet that are on top of Edros, uh, both looking nearly destroyed, broken bones, their skulls nearly caved in <laughs> from a, a swoop hammer hit from some sonic damage. They're going to end up flanking him and are going to make an attack. Each of them a single hit here. So a two on one dice, 16 on the other with a KAC still of 31. Those are both misses. And either roll 17 or higher for Fred Ross on these guys. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. tanking some hits, these other two are going to move up to the edge of the wing and have a few targets in Alindra, Andis, and Knack. It's like Alindra's getting shot and Knack. Let's do first against Alindra. Five on the dice is a miss. Now against Knack. 18 on the dice is a hit. Look how easy that is. Yay. So, a hit against Knack in the jungle. 11 points of piercing and acidic. That's their entire turn. Back to Andis. All right. I'm going to resume my onslaught against the uh, undead evildoer who was menacing Zix earlier and uh, who we we traded some blows with. (laughs) Yes. Plus one for a coordinated shot. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, Get the coordinated the shot yeah we it's got, not looking too good <laughs> yeah it's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> yes. be it's gonna be a rough day for this jerk oh, that's gonna be toot. uh well <laughs> it's gonna be a 22 to hit so that's a hit <laughs> all right 32 <laughs> natural toot. <laughs> and that one is a dead yes <laughs> five hit points left <laughs> please just Keep attacking the ones you've been attacking. Oh, uh, 34 points of damage still, right? Are we in big get em territory? Uh, I did not use big get em. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 32, it's it's dead no matter what. Do you have a, a move <laughs> action you'd like to, to make, Andis? Uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna quick draw a battery and reload my gun. And so, mm-hmm. Oakley Doakley. Let's go back to Edros Veronis. One of these guys dead on top of you. Other one's still still up that you <laughs> nearly cut in half on your last turn. That critical uh, did nothing to him. I'm going to stab him. I, but I, just a single attack I, if it well, makes you feel better. This, this one I think is the one that has get him on it, right? I believe so, yes. But Yep, yep. single attack. Okay. 18 I on the dice. It. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 18. Uh, That's 37 to hit. Had, or I'm sorry, uh, 36 or 38 to hit and 37 points of damage. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Had only 14 <laughs> hit points left. So once again, this one's dead. <laughs> okay. We do not. I have a move action. 100, can't take 112 uh, points of damage in one turn and then survive the next turn. <laughs> I, I thank it. For my move action, I'm going to move to the Drift Rider and then start climbing up the walls of it. Okay. With my mag boots, so I'm just literally walking up the side of it. Oh, to, ha- to have fun with the <laughs> my undead friends on the wing? Yep. Then that is... That's all turn six. Turn seven. Alindra Vallis, how often do we get to turn seven? Oh, not very often. All right, so I'm going mm-hmm. toward photon attunement. Learn my lesson. Uh, <laughs> nice try, Gloria. <laughs> trying to trick me. <laughs> uh, Stupid over. sister trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Make me branch out my ability. <laughs> That's not how I do. All right, so I'm going to use my jetpack. Yeah, I have a jetpack now. I've joined the cool club, and yep. I'm going to jump up on the wing. And uh, I still have my haste circuit on, so I'm going to do a full attack up on the wing. Uh, so this is a 26 to attack. Uh, that is a hit. All right, so 39 damage. Oh, calculator, do not fail me now. In my hour of need. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is... Oh, yeah, no, he's still up. Oh, but just barely. Oh, good, because oh, I've got another attack. Yeah. <laughs> Figure that. Oh, joyous day. Mm. Oh, no, Three not on a the great dice. one. Ugh, 17 to hit. 17 against Casey is a miss. Oh, nice what try, a 
Knack Feldspar. Back can, to you. Can I see the two uh, two undead guys up on the wing of the Drift Rider? Yep. They standing? shot down at you. Excellent. Oh, happy day. You also see a couple skulking through the, the jungle behind you about to snipe Raimi to death. Because guess what I can do? Get them, everybody. We're going to spin everybody that RP. In the club get get em. So every uh, remaining enemy has get them, and it's big get them. So it's plus two to the damage rolls as well. There and are four of these guys left. I am going to, instead of using my uh, uh, clever faint ability, I am going to attack the one that is menacing Alindra with my minor disruption pistol. Oakley Doakley, make me an EAC attack roll. That is a 26 to hit. And with that, he Wilhelm screams off the top of the wing <laughs> because he had four <laughs> hit points left. Yes! <laughs> Nearly anything will kill this guy. Yes! Ah! Falls into the dirt. I mean, Rifle I think we can, on the ground. I think we can do better than a fake Wilhelm scream. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Sirenscape. <laughs> and Rami Quindar, we're back to you. It seems like you're fighting your own platoon-style battle in the jungles of the facility. These two are gun- gunning for you. So I'm going to attack the same one that I attacked last time. Okay. And cast magic missile. Okay. Uh, so that's 15 points damage. 15 points of damage. Oh. Boy. Oh, he's still up. Uh, then I'm going to keep on keeping on going this way. <laughs> <laughs> Moving it through the jungle. Uh, Taking the scenic your, route. That was oh, your no. full round. Yeah, no, you did oh. a full round. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no, Miles. You're back where you started from, and it's their turn. Oh, uh, they are sniping you through the jungle. Let's make a... a just a single attack because they're going to move up to the the log that you have vacated. A single attack each. First attack. 16 on the dice is a hit. Second attack. 18 oh, on the no. dice is a hit. Oh no! 31 damage in total. 15 on the first one's attack. 16 on the second. Okay. Still up. Yep. Dang it. <laughs> I should have made that. <laughs> a couple attacks there. I'm rolling rocks against Raimi. The rest of you, not so much. <laughs> and I've only got one more alive over here to the side, and that is one right next to Alindra. It's going to move forward and try and make a single melee attack against her. Two on the dice. We'll not do it. <laughs> I'm so yeah. glad. Wasted that turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> and as one of our seven, we're back to you. All right, I'm going to activate my hover skates to get an extra 30 feet of movement uh, to sort of uh, zip around this copse of trees mm-hmm. and come upon this pair of undead commandos hassling my boy, Raimi. And they're, uh, they're not looking too good. They've been they've been exploded and shot at themselves. <laughs> right. yeah. and, and just comes around. It's like a one hang on, Raby. He <laughs> comes around. like, hang on, Raby. I'm coming. Oh, whoa, whoa. And they're like smoking and like just like <laughs> falling apart. I'm like, uh, uh, I guess I'll take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to shoot at, so let's say the one who looks, I don't know, the one that's closer to me uh, <laughs> looks like looks like he's been on fire the most. So I'm going <laughs> to, I think uh, he might have taken a little bit more of the explosive damage. Yeah. So I'm going to take my shot with the disruption rifle. All right. That's going to be Ooh. a 27 to hit. That's a hit. And that's going to be 30 points of damage. Had 26 left. That one's dead. Yeah. Two left. Edros Vranish, you're up there on the wing. What have you got for your turn? I've got the classic charge and do two attacks. Okay. On slotting <laughs> this yep. guy. Yep. Oh, boy. This guy not, not quite flanked, not but... Have, yeah, and does not have get him. If I, there's no, it has get him. Oh, yeah, everything's oh, got does, him. Oh, okay, okay. Not, not a lot of uh, escape routes for this guy except falling off the wing of the plane. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except the sweet okay, release of death. Yeah. First one's definitely a hit. Uh, mm-hmm. so, oh, they're both hits, baby. Yeah, those are both hits. All t- so that's thirty-nine points of damage on the first. Forty-one points okay. of damage. Forty-one. Oh well, okay. big, Hold big on. get him. Just I know. <laughs> <laughs> both of them are actually thirty-nine points of damage plus 
the uh, four points all together with get them. So 41 each for a total of 82. Oh boy, that's the first damage this one's taken. It is. <laughs> it's not doing great, but uh, it is still fighting strong as we go into turn eight, Alendra Vallis. You've got a near flanking buddy now. <laughs> A catty yeah, corner. Can I can I get into flanking position with him? I mean, fortunately, there's not really much room left right. on the wing, but you unless, can fly there unless you had the jetpack. Yeah. Oh, can I jetpack there and and use my sword from there? Yes, this right behind this guy on the edge of the wing, uh, over his fallen comrade, uh, you can make a, a single attack. Now. I can't. I can't use my haste circuit to do a full attack while oh, I'm in no. the air. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're still still hasted, so you get a, a move action. Uh, yes, full attacks all around for everyone. Awesome. Waste right. all these these charges. That sounds good. Oh to yeah, me. they're all they're all gonna be gone. All right. <laughs> oh man. Three on the dice. <sighs> Uh, well tonight. So. Flanking. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be a night. Oh, 21 to hit. 21. KAC at 22. That is a miss. Oh, oh, so, oh. Close. so close. Great. Oh. Come on, Melinda. Hey, it's not, it's not a three. Yeah, it's not it's a three. It's better. <laughs> Much better. Um, okay, so that's 36 with Gidham. Yes. Sorry. 36 yes. damage. Okay, he's still up. Oh, boy. He needed those two attacks. Oh, no. Oh, barely hanging on for this commando's life. Nack Feldspar, on to you. All right. So I am now uh, seeing the guy on top of the Drift Rider is handled. I'm going to switch my focus to the one that is uh, menacing Raimi still. And I am going to... <laughs> I'm going to get him. And I kind of want to take a shot with my minor disruption pistol in the so same just. End. Uh, Just and, on oh, the edge of your your dark vision let, there. The let me one let, the... let me rephrase that because I am uh, I'm going to use my get em, or my, excuse me my move action to boost and I'm going to use uh, my get em attack for this guy with the minor disruption pistol. Okay, so th- th- this is outside of the first range for your pistol, right? Oh shoot, this is a forty range pistol. I never rolled a three on the die, so this is useless. But he still get him. So. <laughs> So you can just see him on the edge of your 60 foot range here, but shooting through um, the jungle and outside of that range in increment, that's a total minus six. So unfortunately against EAC, even that is a miss, uh, which means Ramey Quindar, we're on to you. This one looking ragged behind cover from where you're at. And he's got get him on him. Yes, he does. All right. So I'm going to fire my X gen gun. All righty. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> it wanted it wanted so bad to get something else, any other number on the D twenty, but a natural one. Range everything so much. Oh, oh man! Oh no! This is a bad one. Ridiculous recoil on your your X Gen submitted by JJJ. Oh, oh no! Oh no! no. <laughs> I love how that <laughs> ought to need this to be submitted by him and you guys hate it. Uh, you misjudge your weapon's recoil, allowing it to spring into your face. You're dealt 1d4 non-lethal damage, uh, two points of non-lethal, and I need you to make a fortitude save. Ooh. Oh, you rolled really well on that. Uh, it, it's, I rolled well on something today? <laughs> it's yeah. a DC 21. You've rolled a 27. Or be dazed for one round by your own incompetence. Oh, Pretty man. rough critical fail. But don't worry. This guy is going to... Actually, he took a lot of damage from our main man, Andus. I think this guy's going to wheel around and try and do a double shot against the android as he sees you're having difficulties with your own gun. <laughs> no, my beautiful face, no. What is your KAC, Tripper, for Andus? 28. Yikes. Okay, so he has rolled a couple of attacks. Both of these are going to be misses. Yes. And this last guy is is, uh, is going to, seeing he is surrounded, is going to make a single attack against Alindra flying behind him on the edge of the wing of the plane. Ooh, a 19. A <laughs> super hit on the dice. <laughs> uh, so it has hit Alindra. Going to a couple D6 for damage. Oh, very low damage. 12 points of sonic bludgeoning damage. That's their turn. And as we're back to you. All right, I'm going to spin the move. I'm going to track this one last guy 
and I'll say, nobody something. And I shoot my gun. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be a thirty-eight to hit. Yeah, that's a hit. All right, no get him damage. So we're just looking at twenty-seven points of damage on this guy. And that is enough to drop him. Boom! Boom. Down to one. Oh, oh no! <laughs> left, and that is Edros's turn. Edros, you got this one last soldier up in front of you. What do you want to do? Your comrades are all dead. And you are literally in between the two people you do not want to be in between. It was nice knowing you for this short while. <laughs> Full attack. And I have the You see a tear coming out of a tear rolls down the undead <laughs> soldier's eye. It's like, <laughs> like a tear of acid. <laughs> but what about the acid dark times vest <laughs> that I don't know the name of? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there were good times. Uh, but this is going to be three attacks. Uh, Good. But a minus six to each. Six. So this could just be a huge whiff. Let's we'll see what the dice say. Let's see what the dice say. That's going to be a 23 to hit. Yeah, no, that's a hit. He's dead okay. on the first. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of build up there. It's like, oh, well, we got to roll pretty low. And we are out of combat. You have taken out an entire squad of undead mar- corpse folk marines. You've secured the Drift Rider. Uh, is is Zix conscious? Uh, yeah, well, she looks like she got a bonk on the head, so she was kind of dazed for that uh, that fight. But uh, a minute or so later, she can shake it off, and uh, yeah, that she confirms that this was was all of them. The the aide came uh, a couple minutes ago and searched through the ship for any survivors. Hmm. What about Caddy Wampus and Bum Puzzle? Back at the facility. Oh, there we go. We talked. We spoke to him before we left to come here. Raimi uh, just flops on the forest ground. <laughs> Edros comes over to you and, a, and he looks down and says, well, looks like you took a few uh, needles there, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> a couple. And uh, starts trying to drag Raimi back to the ship. <laughs> yeah. would, would, you like, uh, would you like some healing? Would that I, make I, you feel better? I, I would love somebody. All right. Well, Saren Ray says, be gone, boo-boos. <laughs> that's, what, that's what my god says my god who i worship and pray to says be gone boo boo <laughs> guys he's a neophyte he doesn't know the prayers yet i guess wait, that's wait, so. i'm checking my notes here no no that's actually a serenite prayer gone boo boos <laughs> What uh, what ability are you using here, Tyler? Uh, he just said, "Be gone, boo boos." <laughs> yeah, I can I can heal them for three d eight plus my wisdom modifier. So, um, does this take an RP or no? It's just something just I do. Something you, can, something you do. Yeah, divine champion. I get access to uh, some, some mystic spells. One is mystic cure. Nice. I can cast it as a second level. So three d eight plus whiz. Uh, so you get a eight. I rolled an eight and two threes. Uh, otherwise known as what. 14 points of healing and uh, plus my wisdom modifier, which is, you know, awesome. What is it, Tyler? What, what's what's the amount of awesome? Uh, plus one awesome. So you oh, get 15 ooh. points of health back. All right. So Neck is coming up to help Andis with any medicine checks that it needs to roll. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm about to do. I'm about to get, give, him, give him a proper patching up. Although I am very impressed by... Uh, uh, Tyler's ability to use his magical religious <laughs> healing is <his, his> bye <laughs> bye boo boos. I think you're 39 on your medicine check with a plus two from Nax aiding. <laughs> it does <laughs> does a, a little bit more, right? It does. It does I think it does the trick. Uh, yeah, it's you know level plus my int, so that's uh, going to be 18 HP at this point. Nice. How, how's Raimi doing? Now I am up to 43 HP out of 59, so. Better. I still need to take a ten minutes rest to <laughs> get all my SP back. But yeah, you guys can do that. Who's uh, who's burning an arm? I am. Uh, I am as well. Uh, Dross will. Why not? He's got a lot of RP. Andis fared okay. Uh, Andis is doing all right right now. Andis is gonna okay. hold off for the for the moment. <sighs> Um, so while you guys are resting up, um, a massive space battle is going on above you. You can just see like little pinpricks in the night sky. And, you know, each one of them is probably like a massive explosion somewhere in the system. Uh, what what are you guys talking about? What is the plan? Uh, let's get on the Drift Rider and see what the status of it is. If we had some some goons on there, let's see if we can get this sucker off the ground. And do what? 
I mean, we can't just march into a... We can't fly into that. We'll die. Yeah, we'll get blown out of the sky immediately. Yeah. We're gonna... We have to have some kind of plan. I would like to try and... I would think the best thing to do would be to try and board the stellar degenerator and then use its weapons, but I have no idea if we could even get close to this thing. I, uh, I, I don't know. So, you have access to Drift Riders computers and what you saw on the facilities computers... Andis, why don't you give me a computer check and any um, anyone that has profession soldier or something similar, maybe give me a, a check. Can we assist gotcha. with the computer's check? Um, yeah, or you can make your own. Come to your own conclusions. <clears throat> yeah, both wrote really well there. So is this to, is this, sorry, can you describe what the computer's check is for one more time? Um, just taking a look at the data that you've gotten from the facility, from the, the space battle overhead. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, no, you're, you're able to come to the realization that it seems like anything that is getting within maybe 10,000 miles of the stellar degenerator, you know, like half the the distance of this system is entering into a massive field of fire. You're seeing a ton of the the corpse fleet ships being just uh, obliterated. So you're unsure if if you went on to it now, if it would uh, even be feasible in the the drift rider. Ed Ross taking a look at the the information here. There is it doesn't seem like a lot that can can scratch the the stellar degenerator. Not only is it being surrounded by a halo of fire from many of the planetoids, it has a number of gun installations on it that seem to have all come alive. And through your discussion, you know that there's probably only one thing that can potentially destroy the degenerator or even make it through its defenses, and that is the corpse fleet has brought an ultronaut into the system, a massive colossal, ultra-colossal vessel, and just from the, the make of it, you're able, with a pretty easy, maybe knowledge pirate uh, check, tell that this is one of their capital ships, called the Empire of Bones, and it is the only thing currently in the system with the potential firepower that could take on the Degenerator. Alright, well this capital ship can certainly, might be able to take on the Degenerator, but we can't go on. That ship has thousands of soldiers in it. There's no way we could possibly... I mean, there's gotta be some way we could sneak on, maybe a shortcut or something, or seal ourselves into a into the bridge or anything? How do we maybe. pretend to be undead corpses? Well, we oh, that's easy. I, I, I kill you and then raise you with necromancy. Oh, well, there's that <laughs> well, that's too. That's easy. Okay. Yes. It's very easy. We, uh, could, we could take their ship. We, oh. Okay. Yes, 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 the... The sepulchral class transport ship that we could indeed. Try it should and... be about a half a mile away from from the drift rider. And, and according to Zaz, it should be empty because we got all of them here. Mm. Yeah, so we can use this to sneak onto the ship. And yeah, so Nack has the ability to make himself seem like other beings, so he could impersonate one of these officers and possibly get us into a cargo bay or a docking bay. Hopefully, not ninety four though. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, Hopefully we have a time to sneak in a nap, but otherwise, let's do this. <laughs> As the battle rages on, you nap peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> you take a good siesta, a 24-hour break, contemplate. No, the battle is going on right now. Uh, there is no time for rest, but you guys can skulk through the forest. And yeah, you find what indeed looks like a an undead bone ship in the, the woods, and it has the the signal pinging off of it, the black wing sepulcher. And the Oxian shuttle, the first thing you notice, it seems to be open to the air. You can just kind of see through what looks like to be the, the rib cage, an engineered bone-like bulkhead of the vehicle. And stepping onto it, you don't hear anything. There doesn't seem to be any movement. You can walk towards the bridge, and at its front, it looks like a, a regular uh, bridge with uh, stations on it. And then in the back, there's a number of seats. So it looks like the carrier portion of the vehicle. As you step forward towards the bridge, though, one large chair attached to the ceiling stands looking out at the front displays, and it swivels as it uh, as you make your way forward. And you see what looks like the remains of a human male. Its flesh atrophied, blackened, and putrid in places. And where its legs should be, it seems to be attached to its seat by a wide ray of nanocarbon tubes and high tensile wires. Several Borg-like cybernetics are 
drilled into its skull, and it seems to regard you for a moment, and then just silently turns back forward facing. You guys are on the ship. What do you want to do? So can I make a knowledge check? Of any, can I make a knowledge check of any sort uh, to try to figure out what that uh, what that is? <laughs> yeah, make me a life science check. Uh, let's see. That's gonna be a twenty-four for me. I mean, I mean, it it is, twenty-eight. It, it, yeah, you guys can probably guess as to what it is. It's some kind of undead cyber zombie that seems to be hardwired into the pilot station of the the ship. And it is just barely alive. If it's probably as much a threat to you as <laughs> like a, a rat, you can see it can barely move. Hey, its hey, 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 <laughs> not, not an Ahsoki, but you know, it, it's like a, uh, a one quarter CR <laughs> threat to you at this point. Mm. Uh, and just seems to be hardwired into the ship, much like one might put in an AI, but um, this seems to be the pilot. Can we speak to it? Or attempt to? Um, yeah, yeah. If you, you know, even trying to psychically access its mind, there is not a lot going on there. It, it seems to be half just computer chips and the other half kind of uh, stimuli input. So it's you know using the eyes and stuff of this. So it bomb. wouldn't they- it wouldn't alert anyone that we're planning a route. It doesn't have the yeah the wherewithal. Oh, cool, but cool. Right. And, and Rainy, and- as you're looking it over, you are pretty sure that you could easily hack into its mind with your, your techno magics and just take it over completely. Sweet. I'm going to do that right now. You have control undead? Is that one spell you have? I do. Command undead. Yeah, so easily you can take him over. If you guys want access to some of the other stations, it'll take some time doing computer checks, um, but it, it's a fairly easy computer check. So do you, do you want to try and... Uh, unlock the other four stations probably a good idea i would say okay so it doesn't it it's really only a few minutes before you have access to just about everything on the ship i think with you know aiding one another and going through you can unlock them pretty easily and yeah now you have basically full control oh ernest does this thing have any guns show me where the guns uh patrick does this thing have any guns yes it is (laughs) the sepulcher class pretty pretty basic but it is a yonxian shuttle all right, Ramy, fly casual. <laughs> you joke, but that is that's the thing that's going to happen. <laughs> that's literally what we're about to do. <laughs> yeah. um, there are a couple of, I believe, integrated guns on this thing, but it's it's not that great. It's pretty pretty low tier ship. Uh, it's really just for for getting into war zones, dropping off some some marines, undead marines, getting out. But there is a gunnery station. Is that where you want to sit, Edros? Yes. Alrighty. Are you guys taking off immediately? I mean, uh, yeah. Well, we should probably tell the goblins where we're going. <laughs> oh, oh, before we do anything, Alindra, while everybody else is doing their computer things, because Alindra can't help with that, she sits in meditation for one minute um, for sidereal influence for uh, Graviton, uh, which gives her insight bonus to bluff. Right. Awesome. Okay. For like an hour or something. Good, good. Um... And you can you can message back to the the goblins in the facility. Uh, Zix is still on board the the drift rider and, and explain what is happening. But yeah, you, you feel the sense of urgency as this battle is going on. And Adros, you know that it would actually be a lot easier to sneak aboard this colossal ship while a battle is going on. Oh if you, yes, if you everybody wait for will be at. Be over. There are strict battle stations that everybody must be at. So as long as we avoid those, it should be an easy. Easy walkabout. <laughs> yeah, super easy. We'll see how easy it is. Uh, <laughs> as you take off from Gateway Control, uh, planet number one, uh, you all do just feel a sense of unease. You're going to have to pressurize your environmental protections, take the last gulp of fresh air, maybe, as, as you know, this transport, the sepulcher, is open to the elements. As it begins its climb, the atmosphere, you know, begins to thin out, so... Space space suits on. <laughs> Alindra, looking down from the bridge, you can see in the distance the nearly destroyed facility, the silent drift rider. You know, somewhere down there, the goblins and Zix are probably waving you farewell, and it's hard to shake the feeling that could be the last time you ever see them again. Are you ready, ready to take this crew into the bowels of the corpse fleet? Ready as we'll ever be. You guys make it into the high atmosphere to the boundless reaches of space beyond that very quickly and 
can see the orange and red flashes, the telltale signs of distant laser fire. The sons of the gateway seem to be fighting back as well, as there's a lot of solar activity against the corpse fleet. Massive coronal spikes and solar flares seem to emanate from the fiery masses, but almost all of these attacks seem to be either incredibly inaccurate or underpowered. A lot of them you see lighting up and showing off the eoxy and purple shielding units, bypassing, missing entirely. Every once in a while you do see what seems to be a fireball of nuclear energy as maybe a small vessel's dark energy drive goes critical and it implodes. And it doesn't take long for you to zero in on the Empire of Bones. It is the largest vessel in this wing of the corpse fleet, and it is larger than most space stations. The ship is surrounded by explosions and debris forming a nimbus cloud of flotsam and space, but you can see the capital ship's weapons form a huge cut, you know, like massive hole in this debris field as it fires on distant targets down on the planetoids. The capital weapons doing, you know, thousands of points of damage. <laughs> Who wants to try and make a a scan of the, the, the ship? I'll give you some information on the science station. This will be a computer's role. Yeah. Sure. And this, you want to jump in this station? Yeah, let's take a look. Oh, it's a roll off between Rami and Andis. I don't know. He got a pretty good one. Let's see it. See ya. Uh, <laughs> Ray my nose. Ray takes versus a wheel. A 39. <laughs> the highest uh, DC here is 30. So you got all the information, even though <laughs> the scans are coming through really sporadically. The the din of battle kind of causing the, the scanner to go haywire on this crummy little shuttle. The Empire Bones, it's even bigger than a colossal starship. It's brimming with capital weapons and it does not contain any atmosphere. The many explosions of the, the battle going on around it are clouding the Empire of Bones sensors, and it doesn't even seem to be doing a full sensor sweep around it because it's so crazy. But most of the weapons, you can tell, are trained on the planetoids and where these Kishali guns, the defensive sites are. And you're pretty sure it would be possible to slip in closer to the Empire of Bones, perhaps board it without anyone seeing Let's um, do it. You also are able to scan several hangar bays along its length, and one of which you can detect there's a small squadron of fighters leaving, uh, and it leaves the entryway opened to to the vacuum of space, only guarded by a, a minor force field that keeps out like space debris and, and smaller small arms fire. And you're pretty sure that you can land in that hangar bay. Well, let's do it. As you slip the Blackwind Sepulchre forward in space. You come up against what seems like a line, defensive line of crypt war ships, large vessels with a great deal of ordnance themselves. They seem to be forming a wall, a defensive wall around the Empire of Bones. Combined with the debris of tons of destroyed vessels, space rocks that have been pulverized and laser fire above these four ships. Spell out the words. To be continued. Uh, we'll see oh, what happens oh, next time. Creepy. Will you be able to get aboard the ship? Will we have the most one-sided space combat in the history of Cosmic Rays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four vessels versus one. Oh, it's amazing how fast season two comes upon us. <laughs> <laughs> Good time. You have a chance next week, guys, to avoid a starship combat if you can indeed bluff your way past these ships. And fly casual. <laughs> if, if, there's fly bluff, cash. if there's bluffing that needs to be done, oh baby. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that's next time on the show. That'll be episode 63. Oh, man. All right. Damn. 63 is a big number. Mm-hmm. I'm so scared. I'm not going to lie. I'm really scared. <laughs> what? Don't, be, don't be scared. The worst thing that can happen is we all die and then no one gets to do a podcast anymore. <laughs> what, do you, oh, what, what do you guys think is going to meet you as soon as you open the doors to, to this colossal starship? Um, it's gonna be I think a bunch of monsters. Uh, you know what? I bet Zoe is on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he's, he's, he's the leader. He's the leader. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> like somehow that somehow that mother pronker is just gonna end up there. I just know it somehow. <laughs> Hi guys, how's it going? I'm so yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh I mean I don't know. I, I'm wondering if there aren't a lot more of these uh like grafted tech out of their mind, you know, kind of zombie mm-hmm. tech zombies that just do basically maintenance droids throughout, mm-hmm. the, throughout the ship that just do menial tasks. I wonder if we'll see a Probably no defenders left behind, right? I don't think they've left anybody behind to deal mm. with a boarding crew. Yeah, and probably, even probably then, fine. like we're just we're you know, there's we'll just make we'll just paint ourselves gray, and that's good enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're that's gonna, what I'm thinking. We're gonna is come like, across a as, bunch of Wesleys. As soon as we yeah. get off of our ship, we are no longer disguised. Like we don't look like bone guys, you know. So <laughs> nope. We're going to be pretty <laughs> obvious. It's not like I have we can put on the an imperial join. uniform and, and blend in, you know? It's like we're well, still Well, if you'll un- join me in the medical bay, I can fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a holographic spell, so I'm going to split. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Framey just like leaves that up for the rest of his life and is just like, yeah. Well, I've I've always been here. My name is Derek. <laughs> I've I've got a hollow skin too, so Ramy and Knack are just gonna sneak around. Right. Bone, buddies. Yeah. Bone buddies. Bone uh, buddies like week, flecking we'll, buddies. We'll figure out how um awful your plan is next week when it <laughs> inevitably fails. Uh thank you guys for, for playing with me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And have a great night. Say good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.